These are underwater sounds made by humpback whales as they pass near Bermuda in the spring. They were recorded through a hydrophone, which is a kind of underwater microphone. The water is very deep and the sounds are echoing off the under surfaces of waves and from the submarine canyons and ridges on the island slope. If you listened for a long time, you would hear that the sounds are organized into definite repeating patterns. So we call them songs, just as we refer to bird songs or frog songs. Unlike bird songs, humpback songs are very long, six to thirty minutes, and are strung together without pauses between them. They are probably the longest, loudest, and slowest songs in nature. A good way to hear the patterned structure of humpback songs is to speed them up to birdsong speeds. This song is sped up 14 times. It's the only speed change on this record. Here is part of the same song played at its natural speed and pitch, just the way other whales hear it. All the sounds are made by one whale, both the high squeaky tones and the low rumbly ones. Humpback whales are not only singers, but also irrepressible composers. They may be the only animal besides man for which this is true. All the whales in an area are constantly changing their shared song in little ways. Every week the song gets a few new touches, and after a few years the old song has been entirely replaced and everyone is singing a new song. Here's a song recorded five years after the one we just heard. Humpback whales gather and sing near many other tropical islands and one of these is Hawaii. The songs are different from those in Bermuda, but they have the same form. This is a Hawaiian humpback song. Because this whale was in shallower water, the booming echoes of the deep are less apparent. Thank mm -hmm. you.
humpback whales can entrap dense schools of their tiny prey, such as krill, in underwater nets made of air bubbles, which they release while encircling the school. The strange steam engine sound is the whale spinning its bubble net, followed by the burble of rising bubbles, and finally the net spinner's spouting breath at the surface. the loveliest nights I have ever spent at sea was on April 13th, 1970. It wasn't calm, and our little boat bowed and dipped and turned among the high waves left over from a storm. But the whales deep inside those same waves were aloof to all the turmoil at the surface, and their sounds were peaceful and serene. The recording you will now hear was carried on board a Voyager spacecraft into outer space. The reason for including such a strange message, one of many greetings from Earth, is that there is a remote chance, sometime within the next 1.2 billion years, the expected lifetime of the spacecraft, that some other spacefaring civilization may find this bottle tossed into the cosmic ocean and decode its message from Earth. That idea stops my heart. The songs of whales, so long confined within the vaults of the sea, have in the span of just 20 years burst through its surface, flowed over the land, conquered the hearts of their age-old enemy, man, and are now bound on a 1.2 billion year journey that will spread them throughout the galaxy.